an incredible boat builder of the Viking era, a real devotee of Norse gods, and an incredible warrior are none other than Floki. This strange but real fighter is said to be the first one to discover Iceland, a land full of glaciers, icebergs, active volcanoes, and snow. Yet, there's not much evidence that can give a clear image of how Floki spent his early life. However, some of that evidence provides a notion of how brave and brilliant Floki was. Born in the 830th century, Floki Vilgardarsson, son of Glamour and Valgard Boroa Karadotir, he was known for exploring new islands and civilizations. Above all the facts, the tale of Floki is legendary. He's said to be the best friend of the leader of Vikings, namely Ragnar Lothbrok. Their friendship had a unique bond, and also Floki was known to make Ragnar famous in the 9th century. Nevertheless, Floki believes in God above everyone and everything. Why did he want to explore the remotest part of the earth, Iceland? Where did he spend his life and who were his permanent companions? What was the reason behind Floki's death? All these questions have very curious answers, but above all, the prominent question here is, did Floki exist in reality? Or is he just a rumored character in the tale? Let's take a deeper dive to know some fascinating facts about the Viking era. Floki, an extraordinary discoverer and a traveler, are said to be the first one in the history of Vikings to discover and possibly visit Iceland. Some of his findings and trials that discovered Iceland in the later 9th century were mentioned in their surviving manuscripts Land Namabok, the Book of Settlement, and Island Dingelbok, the Book of Iceland. Was Floki seriously the first one to discover Iceland? Well, the sources or the manuscripts mentioned that Vikings were probably not the first ones to discover Iceland. The book mentioned that a group of Christian aesthetic priests were actually the first ones to discover Iceland, and they went there in search of isolation. However, these brilliant priests departed from Iceland after they got the notion of Norsemen arriving there. They left the place immediately and left some of their books, bells, and staff behind. Maybe not the first one to discover Iceland, but Floki is the first one to deliberately sail in such remote parts of the world. Floki's idea to discover this calm and remote part of the world is based on the stories of two earlier men, Nadod and Gadar Svarvarsson. Nadod stepped unintentionally during his journey with some of his companions on an unknown island that had no human beings, only deep forests entirely covered with snow. Nadod named this strange island Snear Island, which is an island fully covered with snow. Having heard about the story of Gotter Svavarsen and Nadod, he headed towards Iceland with his wife Gro, two daughters, and three other men named Herjulfor, Foxy, and Thorolf. Their journey was filled with fickleness from the start. As they started the journey from Shetland Island, one of his daughters drowned, and the next time, they halted at the Faroe Islands, where Floki's second daughter was to get married there. How did Floki and other sailors reach the remotest part of the world? Being completely strange about the routes, Floki and his companions headed to an unknown area where no wealth was waiting for him, no villages to attack or raid, and even no men to fight. Only the fact that they knew was that this island was far from somewhere in the north. While it's definitely not an easy task to sail at the remotest area of the earth where a very few of them have previously visited, luck was with Floki that they discovered and navigated to Iceland without sufficient landmarks or any routes during that era. During that era, especially Vikings who used to travel all around, had no appropriate instruments which helped them to find the perfect route to navigate there. Floki and his companions used the sun by day and stars by night, the colors of the water and the flight of the patterns of birds. Other than these natural navigators, they used a small crystal-like instrument that helped in spotting the sun if it was in clouds or urban skies. Such quirky instruments helped them to navigate their Greenland. However, they did not have any specific compass or sextant or anything else to navigate. Other than these awful moments during the journey which we glimpsed, Floki also got three ravens during their sea journey. What are these ravens? Ravens are all blackbirds much similar to crows and are known as Odin's birds. Odin is the far-seeing god and a god known for wandering the earth, also known as the All-Father of Vikings, and now it's pretty clear why Floki chose this divine bird. In its entire journey, Floki set the ravens off three times. The first time was when they returned back to the Faroe Islands and were expecting them to travel long distances. The second time again, Raven was with them and the last time Raven helped them to pave routes to Iceland. It was much similar to what is actually shown in the show. Finally, after facing all the barriers, the small crew in the boat landed up at the bay near Reykjavik. However, it wasn't the end here, but the crew navigated the north to Vatnafjordur in search of that remotest island on Earth. 
The beautiful land was full of glaciers, active volcanoes, blissful waterfalls, and whatnot. Iceland was not treeless, but there were some deep forests and plantations where Vikings immediately took advantage of the opportunity and started building their settlements. Floki and his companion found it a good place to reside, so they planned to live near the river. Floki and his friends spent most of the time fishing and doing some other activities. They had a good time in summer and autumn on their island and during the journey, but winters were crazy and jam-packed with problems. While being busy all day in summer and autumn, they did not manage to store some fish and other food products for themselves and their animals. So this time they were at fault and during these harsh winters, the crew lost almost all their animals. However, they did not give up and when the spring approached, Floki climbed a great peak to look around this strange island, but the results were pretty strange. There was nothing spotted apart from ice and snow, and hence, the name was discovered by Floki as the Island of Ice. So what did they do after finally discovering the remotest and most strange island? For once, as the entire island was filled with just snow and ice all around, it wasn't an appropriate fit to stay, so they planned to return back to Norway in search of a home. His journey to the remotest island filled with icebergs has a strong reason in his entire life. Floki just faced violence in wars and never found a perfect home to reside and enjoy his life. So to find a perfect place away from the people and the cruel world, he sailed his way to find what he wasn't able to find anywhere else, an appropriate home to spend the rest of his life. However, he neither found Norway a good place to get settled and spend the rest of his life. So Floki and some of his friends again went back to Iceland and planned to settle there permanently. So with appropriate strategies and actions, Floki and his friends were able to settle there and have a good time in Iceland. From the sources, it was found that by 930, Iceland was amazingly populated and it's estimated that there were about 25,000 people residing in that beautiful place. What was the reason behind the death of Floki? The actual reason for Floki's death is not revealed yet, or there is no evidence supporting Floki's death. However, there are predictions that Floki returned to Iceland when he was quite older, and the reason behind his death could also be the age factor or some illness. Loki managed to survive his last days in Iceland with his community, the Vikings, so it's pretty reasonable to comment that the people of Iceland are undoubtedly the descendants of Vikings. So finally, is Floki a fantasy or is it a reality? According to the descriptions and representations of Floki, it is pretty clear that he's represented as an amalgam of several Vikings. Without a doubt, there's some evidence that represents him nicely and relates him to Viking, but still, the chances of being in reality is difficult. When it comes to his expertise, Floki was known as an incredible boat maker, but the fact here is Viking longboats along with a better weapon and diets were the vital reasons which limelight them from their neighbors. So from the context, we can say that Floki of Vikings may not be a reality from history. But yes, he embodies several themes of the period in which Vikings dominated some prominent parts of the world. Finally, what are your thoughts on Floki? A fantasy or a reality? If it was real, what could be the actual reason behind Floki's death? Do let us know your views in the comments below. That said, if you enjoyed watching an interesting life tale of Floki, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the following video!